Guess who just got a ring light? Get those people who vlog right in the middle of it. They look like this on their glasses or they look like this in their eyes. It always looks like the cross in their eyes or something like that. Look at that. It's like I'm in a late 90s hip hop music video. What is this? Can I angle it so it's not in every reflection? I don't think so. Maybe my old glasses because they have the anti-reflective stuff on them. It's a little bit better. All right, we'll rock these today. And how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Even for a few moments, it has been literally six months since I grabbed an Xbox Series S. Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X were officially released November 10th of 2020. And although the X, couple hundred extra bucks, but it plays physical media, I even didn't really play a whole lot of discs on my Xbox One. I didn't really use my Xbox One for much of anything unless I had a review copy for a game that was only available on Xbox. It was very handy when Thimbleweed Park, actually, hold on, check this out. I still I still have the Thimbleweed Park mouse pad. This is like my, this is my actual mouse pad. I use it all the time. Um, love Thimbleweed Park so much. As well as Cuphead, when that was released, it was only available on Xbox. I mostly played games on my PlayStation 4. Huge fan of the Switch as well. Uh, but when Cuphead first came out, it was only on the Xbox, as far as the home consoles go. So I was happy I had one. I was able to purchase that one for sure. And then that's about it. Other than that, I mean, Rare Replay was another reason for me to have an Xbox, but I didn't buy my Xbox One even at launch. I got it through a trade because, again, all the games I really wanted were mostly already on PlayStation or on Switch. And then along the way, that's when I got into VR gaming, including PlayStation VR and then later the Oculus Quest. So when it was available, um, I'm usually pretty lucky when it comes to getting something at launch if I want it at launch. So I grabbed this bad boy here, the Xbox Series S. This is the digital only Still pretty clean. Now, my place, as you can see behind me in my convention pile of stuff behind me, not the most upkept, if you will, especially around here. When it's when there's a white console, I'm like, man, how dirty and how quickly is it going to get dirty? But um, it actually worked out pretty well. It looks pretty good to me. Now, I say that until I look at the little button things on the back. <sighs> I probably shouldn't have blown in it. So when it first released, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it home. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to play it for a little while. And I did a video on that too. You know, a couple days later, do I still regret getting the Xbox Series S? And at the time, I totally didn't. At the time, I was like, this is exactly what I needed for. And then like, you know, one week later, two weeks later, did a couple of quick videos on whether I regretted it or not. Because I was like, and people are like, dude, you, you could have had an X. You could have. I mean, yeah, you, have, you know, you have to keep trying, but you could have had an X and you opted for the Xbox Series S instead of waiting for it. Six months later, my mind may have changed. I think a lot of my mindset has changed already what I feel on the Xbox Series S. This is also compared to the PlayStation 5. I have a Nintendo Switch and I also do have the Oculus Quest 2. And we'll talk about all of those and how it relates to this coming up later on in this video. So when it comes to the Xbox Series S, that means that I'm actually downloading my games. All the games I'm getting are downloaded digitally onto the console, which means I need to make room for games. Sometimes I download a bunch of them. I need to delete some of the games and all that. I was like, are you paying all this money for all these games? And I'm like, no, not at all. You see, the beauty of having the Xbox is having the beauty called Game Pass. And, and Game Pass for me was the reason to get one. Now, I I did not have Game Pass when I had an Xbox One. Again, most of the games I wanted to get were on the PlayStation. However, with the Xbox Series S, and I was like, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about this Game Pass all the time. It's kind of like a little bit like PlayStation Plus, which I also have, but PlayStation Plus is only like two or three games a month. So long as you have it, you can, I mean, you can download them or claim them, get them later if you want, but Game Pass is always evolving. There's always a bunch of games all the time um, and an archive that you can go back to. You can't, you know, not just the few games that month, but you can go back and grab a bunch of them from earlier. Gotta love that too, right? But again, not without gripes. You see, the thing is, I don't have my Xbox Series S turned on all the time. So because of that, every time I do turn it on, there's all these new updates. I just wanna play something or check something out really quickly, download the game, I'll turn it, you know, and then I'll walk away for a while. I'll come back to it in a day or two, game will be downloaded. I'm sure the game's already downloaded like later on that night. This one I have hooked up to my Wi-Fi. I don't have it connected directly with an ethernet port or anything like that, or whatever that Wi-Fi cord's called. <laughs> Wi-Fi cord, there's an oxymoron. The LAN cable, I guess. Um, I do have one set up through my PlayStation because I use that. I use my PlayStation 5 also primarily for all the entertainment stuff, all the streaming uh, with Peacock, Netflix, Amazon Prime. Yeah, we have all. We have too many of them probably. 
You put Hulu in there, Disney Plus, I think I already said that. But with Game Pass and with the Xbox, I'll just set up a batch file, download a bunch of stuff, and I'll come back to it in a day or two and then check those games out later. Not a problem at all. But the problem is when I do come back to them a day or two, then it's like, hey, now you want to play your game. Now you have to download this update that you didn't ask for. And maybe there's a way I can set it up so I don't have to, so I don't, I mean, I'm okay if it just says like, hey, we're gonna download the update for you. I love the fact that my PlayStation does that. I love the fact that the Switch does that for the most part. Um, there's gotta be a way I can do that with the Xbox as well. But many of the games, it's cool to go through Undertale again. You know, it's funny, I have this on the Switch, but I'll, I'll play it again on a console, just, you know, just to set, just to have, anyway, just to see it again. You know, cool to check out games like Narita Boy. By looking at the box, I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll download it if it's cheap. I'll wait for it to, for it to be on sale, but hey, here it is. All of a sudden, I can just play it and find out for myself. You see, the problem with me in Game Pass, though, is a lot of games like this, and maybe other games kind of like it, is since I didn't pay for it directly, I'm not as compelled to play all the way through it. You know what I mean? It's just like, since I didn't pay for it, and since I didn't specify, like, this is the game I want to play through, this is the game I want to really focus on, I'll play it for a little while, and then, like, I might turn it off after I die once. You know, I don't, if, if the game really catches my attention, if the game really grabs me, if the game really moves me, if the game really sucks me into its storyline and everything, then yeah, I'll play it all the way through. But something like this, I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, check it out for a little while. Check it out for a little while anyway. And I love Game Pass for that reason. I love the fact that there's so many indie titles available. The new games are fine. The classics are great. The must plays perfect. But I want to see, I go straight to that indie section. I want to see all those great indie titles, um, new ideas, new art. I love it. I'm a huge indie gamer. And of course, with games like Retromania Wrestling, well, it's available on just about everything now. You got it on your Switch, you got it on your PlayStation, but they were able to get it on Xbox first. Well, they were able to get it on Steam first, but as far as home consoles go, they were able to get it on Xbox first. So I was able to play it while all of my other friends were like, ah, oh, I'm waiting for the Switch version. Oh, I, I got to play it on PlayStation. I'm like, that's good for you, but I'm so glad I have one of these Xbox Series S's because I can play it right now. And man, I'm so glad I did. And it's a lot of fun, man. I, I, I still come back to this game every once in a while. And not just because I'm in it, right? Game Pass, to me, is the reason to have any Xbox. Whether you collect physical games and you have that going on for yourself, or whether you would just want to go the Xbox Series S route like I am, I just have the Xbox Series S, Game Pass. That's all I need. And there are so many great games to choose from, like must plays, again, the indie titles, you can categorize by shooters or puzzle games, or just looking through all the games, the entire selection, not just with Xbox Series, but also Xbox One, Xbox 360. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to choose from on here, both indies, AAA titles, you got the Halo games, you got the Yakuza games, and the turning point for me was the Bethesda announcement where they said, well, we at Xbox, we're gonna do Bethesda big, we're gonna kick it off with Game Pass. All Bethesda, it's all you. My Xbox Series S turned into a Bethesda box. That's all I need, man. You got the Doom games, you got a ton of other games that they've made, but seriously, man, when it comes to the Elder Scrolls game, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, my personal favorite, I do like Oblivion more than Skyrim. The fact that I can play Elder Scrolls 3 Oblivion on the Xbox Series S now was a mind-blowing experience for me. You see, I played through this game probably about five or six times, and to me that's a lot for playing any one game over and over and over again. Uh, but I played through this game several times on my PlayStation 3. You gotta consider PlayStation 3 was a few iterations ago. So you got the PlayStation 3, then there's PlayStation 4, now there's PlayStation 5. You have Xbox 360, which it came out for originally, then Xbox One, and then Xbox Series S. The low times are mind-blowing. Because when I play this on the PlayStation 3, I'd play Oblivion on PlayStation 3, go inside a door, fast travel somewhere, wait, do something. That slow moving progress bar, but on this game, not a problem. Yes, it still loads. Of course, it still loads. But the fact that it loads so much quicker, you know, to me, a blink of an eye compared to what I was waiting for on the PlayStation, oh my goodness, it was like, it's night and day. And I don't mean that literally because this game has day and night cycles, but the fact that you could do that, so great. And my favorite thing about this game, it's not even supposed to be part of this game, but the duplication trick, not just to help you beat the game, but I remember, it's, it's a fond memory I have of when my kids were much younger. 
I'd play Oblivion. Like, I'd, I'd go through and just I'd already beat the game. I've already done the stuff. But using the uh, duplication trick where I would just make a bunch of stuff appear for no reason and just have it be the silliest thing ever. It's like, hey, we're going to make a bunch of stuff appear uh, in this guy's house. And then he'll be surprised when he comes home and sees, you know, all, all this, you know, all these watermelons or whatever. If you're not familiar with the duplication trick, really quickly, it's if you have multiple of the same scroll, kind of double tap to equip it and then drop any other item and then you will drop as many scrolls as you have. So if you have five scrolls and you have one apple, you uh, double tap the scrolls, you drop the apple, you'll end up dropping five apples. Of course, a lot of people do that with weapons so they can resell them to make money quickly. Or if you're me, you can stand over some random sleeping fool and duplicate pumpkins. So when he wakes up, he'll have all these pumpkins all over his house, what? What's this guy gonna what's this guy gonna do with all these pumpkins? Now <laughs> you're also using up system resources when you do this. <laughs> so in doing so, uh, it'll slow down and it might even freeze and may even crash. Like this this game actually crashed. This game here, you know, paid however much money I paid for this thing. The newest, the top of the line, the Xbox Series S, super awesome, and it crashes. Well it crashes because it's it's overcompensating or whatever. And maybe it would come back later. I don't know. I didn't I didn't test it. I didn't check it. I just backed out and just start over again. I didn't save it or anything like that, fortunately. So here we are six months later and do I regret getting this when I could have had an X or I could have waited. I could have waited because that's the funny thing. You gotta remember or keep an eye or realize I don't play this every day. I don't even play it every week. My number one gaming systems for me that I personally play on are the Nintendo Switch and the Oculus Quest 2. And for different reasons. You know, Switch more for, you know, a lot of the indie games that I play are also on Switch, so I'll just play that on the Switch. Easier for me that way. I'm not traveling. If I was traveling, I'd play it portable, but I just play it docked. And then the Oculus Quest 2, because VR gaming is gaming in and of itself, and I can't really compare the two. You know what I mean? It's like they're they're both they're both video games, but in a different aspect. I will say that I probably play this through Game Pass more than my PlayStation 5. Now my PlayStation 5 is turned on more. But it's more, for, again, for Netflix, for YouTube. Um, you know, my kids use it for, you know, Hulu and Disney and stuff like that, too. As you know, as, as I do as well. But I bought the PlayStation 5 at launch as well. And we'll do a PlayStation 5 video later on. I only have two PlayStation 5 games. And both of them are also on PlayStation 4. So why did I even bother getting a PlayStation 5 just yet? I mean, to, to, to beat the rush, I guess. I like the fact that I have one. And I do like the fact that a lot of games like Dead by Daylight have a PlayStation 5 patch. Makes it run a little bit better. I think that's pretty neat. Wasn't mandatory by any means. In fact, it's kind of a pain in the ass to hook up your PSVR to it and everything too, so I could have waited on that, but I'm glad I didn't wait on this. Six months from now, we'll see if it's a year later and how much I've played from it since then, but by that time, I'll probably already be on my second playthrough of Oblivion, thinking I'm going to play as a stealthy, like, dark elf but now I'll just be a uh, Nord with blunt force trauma, carrying maces and smacking around fools. Not like I usually do. What about you? Digging the Xbox? Let me know in the comments. Check out this other video in the meantime. Would love for you to see that. And we'll see you again very soon. Thank you.